Avoid this mistake if you want to live a truly fulfilling life. Most people unknowingly sabotage their happiness, success and peace of mind by clinging to habits that do more harm than good. Whether it's wasting time on meaningless distractions, constantly seeking approval from others, or falling into the trap of endless complaints, these behaviors create invisible barriers that hold you back from the life you deserve. What's worse, these habits don't just creep into your daily routine, they take over, slowly draining your energy, confidence and potential without you even noticing. But here's the good news you can break free. In this video, we're going to uncover seven of the most common habits that are keeping you stuck, starting with the subtle but destructive habit of wasting time. Stay with me, because by the end of this, you'll not only recognize these patterns in your own life, but also feel empowered to replace them with actions that lead to freedom, growth, and true satisfaction. Let's dive in. Number one. Fearing change. Close your eyes for a moment and imagine this. You're on your favorite couch, binging the show you've waited months for, and a twist happens. A new character takes the lead. At first, you're unsure if you'll like them. It's unsettling, isn't it? That resistance you feel. That's the fear of change creeping in. It's normal to feel apprehensive when life throws something unexpected your way. But here's the thing. Those surprises often bring the most growth. The Stoics knew this well. For them, life was not a stagnant pool, but a flowing river, constantly changing its course. Marcus Aurelius, the Roman emperor and one of the great Stoic philosophers, emphasized embracing the fluidity of life. He taught that resisting change is like trying to stop the river's flow with your bare hands. It's futile and exhausting. Instead, why not let the current guide you? Change isn't here to destroy you. It's here to sculpt you into a stronger, wiser version of yourself. Think back to your childhood. Remember the first time you moved to a new neighborhood or started at a new school? It felt overwhelming at first, didn't it? But as time went on, you made friends, discovered new places, and created fresh memories that you now look back on with a smile. Life works the same way at every stage. Change is just another chapter waiting to be written, another adventure calling your name. Now, let me ask you something. What if every change in your life was an invitation to level up? Imagine viewing every unexpected twist as a doorway to something better, something greater than you ever thought possible. Wouldn't that make the journey exciting? Start small. Try taking a new route to work, learning a new skill, or simply saying yes to something you'd normally avoid. Number two, worrying about the trivial. Picture this, it's a sunny morning and you're driving to work when you hit traffic. Instantly, frustration boils over. You think, why today of all days? That moment of irritation spirals, sticking with you through the day. Sound familiar? Worrying about minor inconveniences is something we all do, but it's a habit the Stoics would urge us to let go of. The Stoics believed in focusing on what truly matters. Seneca, another great Stoic thinker, often wrote about how short life is and how we waste precious moments fretting over things that, in the grand scheme, don't matter. Ask yourself this. Will the traffic jam that annoyed you today even cross your mind a month from now? Likely not. Yet, in that moment, it feels monumental. The Stoics challenge us to zoom out, to see the bigger picture, and to allocate our mental energy to what truly adds value to our lives. Let's take a trip down memory lane. Think about the times you worried about things that turned out to be inconsequential. Maybe it was the stain on your shirt before a big meeting or the awkward silence during a date. Do you still lose sleep over those moments? Chances are you don't even remember half of them. Life has a way of sorting out what's important and letting the rest fade into oblivion. Here's where curiosity comes in. 
What if you could train your mind to distinguish between what deserves your attention and what doesn't? Picture yourself as an artist painting your life's masterpiece. Would you waste time perfecting every irrelevant detail or would you focus on the parts that bring your vision to life? The next time you feel the pull of trivial worries, pause and ask yourself, is this worth my peace of mind? You might be surprised at how often the answer is no. Number three, seeking revenge. Imagine this scenario, you're at a cafe, enjoying your favorite coffee and deeply engrossed in a book. Suddenly, someone bumps into you, spilling their drink all over your pages. Anger surges. Your first instinct might be to snap at them or even think about ways to get back at them, but would that truly make you feel better or would it just escalate the situation? Stoics like Marcus Aurelius believed that seeking revenge is like pouring gasoline on a fire. It doesn't extinguish the flames, it makes them burn hotter. They viewed revenge as a futile pursuit that distracts us from our higher purpose. Instead of retaliating, the Stoics teach us to choose understanding and self-control. Revenge only feeds our ego, while forgiveness strengthens our character. Think about a time when you felt wronged. Maybe someone cut you off in traffic or a co-worker took credit for your idea. At the moment, it felt like a personal attack, didn't it? But looking back now, do those incidents still hold the same weight? Chances are you've moved past them. Life is too short to carry the burden of resentment and each moment spent plotting revenge is a moment stolen from your own happiness. Now, Here's a thought experiment for you. What if every time someone wronged you, you used it as an opportunity to rise above? Picture yourself as a knight in shining armor, unshaken by petty slights, focused only on your quest. Revenge keeps you trapped in the past, but forgiveness and understanding propel you forward. The next time you're tempted to retaliate, pause and think, what would a stoic do? You might find that letting go feels far better than getting even. Number four, wasting time. Close your eyes and picture a sunny afternoon. You're lounging on your couch, scrolling through your favorite app. Time slips away unnoticed. Before you know it, an hour has passed and you've accomplished nothing. It's harmless, right? But think about it. How many afternoons like this do you lose in a week? A month? A year? The Stoics would say this is one of life's greatest tragedies, letting time, our most precious resource, slip through our fingers. Seneca famously said, It is not that we have a short time to live, but that we waste much of it. He believed that most people aren't truly living, they're just existing, filling their days with distractions. Wasting time isn't just about idleness, it's about investing our time in things that don't matter. Think about the hours spent in pointless arguments, the endless scrolling through social media, or dwelling on things beyond your control. These are moments you could be using to learn, grow, and connect deeply with life. Reflect on your own past. Think about the times you procrastinated on something meaningful, a project, a conversation, a dream, and instead chose temporary comfort. At the moment, it might have felt satisfying, but how did you feel afterward? Perhaps a pang of regret, wishing you could go back and reclaim that lost time. Unfortunately, once time is gone, it's gone forever. Here's a challenge to spark your curiosity. What would your life look like if you used your time wisely every day? Imagine dedicating even an hour a day to something that fuels your passion or enhances your well-being. Over a year, that's 365 hours, an entire treasure chest of opportunity. The next time you catch yourself idling, ask, is this how I want to spend my finite moments? Number five, seeking external approval. Imagine this, you're at a dinner party, telling a story you think is hilarious. You glance around the table, searching for signs of laughter or approval. A few chuckles here, a nod there, 
but not the response you'd hoped for. You begin to feel uneasy, doubting yourself, wondering if your story was boring. Sound familiar? That's the trap of seeking external approval, the endless chase for validation from others. The Stoics understood this trap all too well. Marcus Aurelius wrote, We all love ourselves more than other people, but care more about their opinions than our own. It's a paradox we often live by valuing our individuality while constantly measuring it against others' perceptions. When you base your worth on external validation, you hand over control of your happiness to others. One compliment can lift you, but one criticism can crush you. It's a fragile way to live. Think back to your teenage years. Remember trying to fit in, maybe buying clothes or acting in ways that didn't feel like you? At the time, you thought it would earn you acceptance, but did it make you truly happy? As you grew older, you likely realized that the moments when you were unapologetically yourself were the ones that brought the most joy. Seeking approval is like chasing a horizon. It keeps moving, and you never truly arrive. Now, what if you shifted your focus inward? Imagine a life where your worth isn't tied to likes, comments or opinions, but to your values, actions and self-respect. What could you accomplish if you stopped seeking validation and started living authentically? When you let go of the need for approval, you gain something far greater. Freedom. Number 6. Looking for problems. It's a beautiful morning and the sun is streaming through your window. But instead of enjoying the warmth, your mind jumps to the deadline you're dreading or the argument you had yesterday. It's almost like your brain is scanning for something, anything to worry about. Why do we do this? Why do we focus on problems even when things are going well? The Stoics would tell you it's because our minds are wired to seek control. When life feels uncertain, we cling to problems as if solving them will restore order. Epictetus taught that the key to peace isn't eliminating problems, but understanding that they are inevitable. Life is full of challenges, but obsessing over them doesn't make them go away. It just steals your joy in the present moment. Now, think back to a time when you let a small issue consume you. Maybe it was a minor mistake at work or an awkward interaction with a friend. You replayed it over and over, analyzing every detail, even though it didn't change the outcome. How much time and energy did you lose? Looking back, was it worth it? Probably not. Here's a question to spark your curiosity. What if, instead of looking for problems, you started looking for opportunities? Imagine waking up each day and asking, what's good about today? What can I create or experience that brings joy? When you shift your focus from problems to possibilities, you unlock a world of potential. Why let problems define your day when you have the power to redefine them? Number seven, complaining. Picture this, you're catching up with a friend over coffee and the conversation turns into a venting session. You complain about work, traffic, the weather, everything that's gone wrong lately. It feels good to get it off your chest, right? But afterward, do you feel better or just drained? Complaining might offer temporary relief but it often leaves you stuck in a cycle of negativity. The Stoics viewed complaining as a waste of energy. Marcus Aurelius wrote, You have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. Complaining focuses on what's wrong, not what can be done. It keeps you in a passive state, waiting for circumstances to change, instead of taking action to improve them. Think about a time when you fell into the trap of constant complaining. Maybe it was during a tough period at work or a stressful time at home. Did complaining solve the problem or did it just make it harder to see the solutions? Complaining is like looking at life through a dirty window. It clouds your vision and makes everything seem worse than it is. Now imagine a life where you replace complaints with gratitude. What if, instead of saying, I hate this traffic, you thought, I'm grateful I have a car and a destination to go to? 
What if every complaint became an opportunity to practice patience or find a solution? The next time you catch yourself complaining, pause and ask, what's one thing I can be grateful for right now? Congratulations on making it this far. By diving deep into these anti-Stoic habits, you've taken the first step toward breaking free from behaviors that hold you back and embracing a life of purpose and resilience. Remember, recognizing these habits is half the battle. The real transformation begins when you take consistent action to replace them with Stoic-inspired practices. Drop a hundred in the comments if you've watched this far. It shows you're among the rare few, the 0.01%, who are committed to finishing what they start and taking control of their lives. If you're serious about creating a better version of yourself, don't forget to join our community by subscribing to the channel. Together, let's turn intentions into actions and make Stoicism a way of life.